next Sunday after that. So um, I think that's my only announcement there. Um, so contact your deacons and good neighbors if you have any emergencies, and then deacons uh, is the same to pastors to contact Bruce and Laura if there are any pastoral emergencies that you need. So are there any announcements for me, guys? Yes. Easter lilies are now available for purchase. There's a sign-up sheet on the round table kind of near the windows. Um, the supply, uh, well, the growers had trouble this year, so um, they're kind of in short supply. But this year, there are two options. A smaller pot, a six-inch pot with uh, one to two stems, uh, that's $9. And then, um, a larger pot, eight inch pot with three to four stems, uh, that's going to be uh, $22. And you can pay by check, cash, or this year, Venmo. <laughs> uh, the deadline is Thursday, March 31st to uh, order your lilies. Thank you. That's a quick turnaround, though. So if you want those, get those ordered in. Thank you. Any other announcements? Okay, um, another thing I thought of, it is a celebration day for Mr. Rogers Day. I don't know if y'all have heard about that, but I wore a special stole for that, and I'll be talking to the kids about it today. So let us worship God.
When the time comes to repent, let us not accuse our neighbor, but face the truth within us, and not to be little or shame, but to seek grace, that we can turn our lives around with God's help. Continuing on with the prayer of confession, having confidence in God's rich mercy, we confess our sins before God and one another. Almighty God, though you lovingly tend us, we have not put forth the good fruits of your spirit. Our consumption poisons the earth, our violence threatens our neighbors, our greed exploits the poor. We must seem a waste of time, but we don't want to suspect. Now trust in the wonderful good news that only Christ can condemn and judge you, but instead he chose to redeem you, draw you near, and call you his own. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. May the peace of Christ be with you. Please share the peace of Christ. So have you ever felt kind of like a fig tree, like you're in the midst of 
everybody else looking one way or everybody else being one way and you kind of feel different, like you're different than everybody else. I don't know if you feel that way. Have y'all ever felt that way? Like you kind of just feel a little different than everybody else, maybe in some, some way, like maybe in school or sports or friendship-wise, you just feel a little different. Yeah? No? You never felt that way? You feel the same as everyone else? Yeah. yeah. All of us, I think, at some point, we kind of feel that way. Sometimes, like the big tree in the midst of all these groups, there's pressure sometimes to be like everyone else. And what I've discovered in life is that God actually made us to be different. We're supposed to stand out and be different. And a lot of times, as you grow older, you'll have pressure from your peers to conform to everything else everybody is doing. Make sure you wear these shoes and make sure you dress like this and drive that car and go to this school and do things the way everybody else does. But God made each of you with very specific gifts that you are made to shine in a very specific way. That that's why you feel different sometimes, because you're supposed to be different. So go ahead and live into that. Be different. <laughs> and I, I wanted to talk about that today because we're celebrating Mr. Rogers. Y'all were a little too young probably to remember Mr. Rogers, but have y'all ever seen that new movie with Tom Hanks kind of showing the old school Mr. Rogers? Have y'all even seen that? No. Well, Mr. Rogers was, um, he was a Presbyterian pastor. And he, he decided his ministry was to do lots of children's shows with puppets. And he would talk, and he developed this whole, this was way before cool TV. So this was way back when they would just use puppets to entertain people. And so his whole message was that God loves you just the way you are, and that you are special. And he did a lot of work with um, the whole message of God loves you no matter what. And I wore this stole today. Because y'all see me wear stoles like red, green, blue, all sorts of stoles, right? Lots of different colors. All of the stoles I wore, you can buy online, you can buy anywhere. There's probably 50 million pastors that wear the same ones that I wear. But this one, nobody else in the world has one of these. This was specially created just for me. It was hand sewn, it was sewn, put together. Each little patch means something has all these things that mean something to me and that symbolize something. So just like this stole, it's the only one that there is on, on all of the earth. Nobody else can ever wear anything that looks like this. They might have a patch that says this and this, but they don't have patches in this order that are these patches, right? So I just want you to remember, just like the soul, there's nobody else like you. They might have your same color of eyes or hair. They might be good at sports like you are, or they might be good in certain subjects like you are, but there's nobody else that can do what you can do and that is made just like you are, okay? I always remember that. You're made to be different, okay? Dear God, thank you for making me special. Help me to recognize my gifts and share them with everyone. Thank you for loving me no matter what. Help me to love others in that same way. In Jesus' name, Amen.
salvation. O Lord of life and salvation, let these words of Scripture live not only in our mouths, but in our hearts, that we will embody your truth and confess our lives that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. The first scripture is from the book of Luke, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9. Now there were some present present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. Do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told the parable, A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up all the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Excuse me while I fumble through this. Uh, the next uh, reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 to 9. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk. Without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labor on what is not, does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and a commander of these peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord, your Lord of God the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them, and to our God, and for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are high, are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a little longer. Work hard to show what you're capable of. Trust me, just a little more time. Such shallow words when you've been told that you're supposed to produce fruit year after year, but you've never seen this fruit produced. What is wrong with me, you might think? Why am I not producing like the rest of everyone else? Everyone else, even in the midst of a drought, is producing. Have you ever felt like maybe you missed it somewhere or fallen short in some way, especially in our society that moves so quickly and demands so much? You, I kind of gave the spoiler away with the kids, but did you notice that the fig tree was planted in the midst of a great fig tree? Planted right there in the ground that was meant for producing grapes. We, like the fig tree, are placed in fields not meant for us. And yet we are expected to thrive. People discount and doubt us, threatening to cut us down if we don't produce in the ways that they expect us to. The ways that they have defined on our behalf. We are afterthoughts demanded to bear fruit or be destroyed. The story of the fig tree reminds us that the world's expectations do not need to be ours. The gardener puts their faith in that which they have no control, digging a bigger hole and filling it with manure. They tend to the tree with everything it needs to grow into its purpose. Perhaps this means bearing figs, Maybe it means providing shade for the laborers during the harvest. Or maybe it's an opportunity for the gardener to tend to the fields in a new way. Or transformation of the owner's ability to see beyond the kinds of results that produce riches. Jesus kind of talks in a harsh manner about the fig tree and to the gardener and the landowner. But I think Jesus is trying to say that those of us living in a fig tree existence are invited to be nourished and tended to so that in time we will grow into our purpose. Like the fig tree, you are worthy. You're not a lost cause. You're not a waste of resources. You deserve audacious hope. You deserve to be nurtured. Your fruit will come. Like the gardener, you are invited to see others with expansive joy, hope, and budding potential. Because in the kingdom of God, all are given the ability to thrive. Watch now meaningful reflection on the victory. In Luke's Gospel, Jesus tells the story of a fruitless fig tree where it's planted with promise only to grow barren and brittle. The landowner in the parable has returned to its empty branches for three years. With patience worn thin and hope withered, he commands the gardener to cut it down, seeing it as a liability to the soil. Let 
let's go. What happens to the fig tree? Does it live? Does it die? Does it bear any fruit? We don't know. And so if we can't read the end of the story, then we must write it with our own lives. Because we know what it feels like to be the fig tree, to be deemed worthless, to be weary enough to believe that we don't deserve to be well. And perhaps we also know what it's like to see the world through the eyes of the landowner, calculating worth based on what we produce, what we accomplish, what we provide. Can we cultivate the vision of the great gardener? The one who sees you for what you are becoming? The one who tends and prunes, nourishes and lets go. Perhaps for us, the fruit is not the ending. The fruit is in the waiting, in the dead of winter, in the manure, the nurture, the rest. Blessed are you, O God, for you are holy, gracious, and good, the hope of all the faithful. Empower the meek and encourage the poor. Comfort those who mourn and fill our humble hearts with gladness. Give food to the hungry, drink to the thirsty, peace to the peacemakers, mercy to the merciful, and honor to the despised. 
Sustain your servants in ministry until at last they see their reward, the joy of eternal life with you through Jesus Christ our Lord. We give ourselves to you once again, and we ask you to fill us to overflowing with your Holy Spirit as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we'll sing together, O oh Lord, hear my prayer. <coughs>
God, we have gifts in abundance, and pour them out like perfume from a flask, not for our sake, but for the worship of the one who lavishes love on the world. up 
the needs of the world and for our community, for our loved ones, for those struggling, cold, hungry, without somewhere to live, through addiction, pain, suffering. We weep with them, God. We walk alongside them. And we also celebrate with those who have joy. And we walk together as families. We unite us as one God. We thank you for all of these things. In Jesus' name, amen. In our closing song, we will sing just in regular hymn form. It's Spirit of the Living God. So everybody can sing together. Perhaps you don't have to wait till the third time. <laughs> okay, intro with it. <laughs> Christ welcomes everyone and makes all things new. 